Welcome back. Our next guest was already a world champion and well on her way to national treasure status. Before the events of the summer, catapulted her, her profile into the stratosphere. And when she won her gold medal in the Olympic lightweight boxing final in Tokyo, she probably became the most popular Irish person in the entire world. You better believe it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, none other than Kelly Harrington has joined us. Good morning, champ. Hello. How are you? All good, all good. How are you? Have Last you come time down? I seen you was in 2018. We in were Temple in Temple Street. Street. Do you remember that? Yeah. For Christmas. Yeah. It was oh. brilliant. Um, listen, have you come down yet? People keep asking me that same yeah. question all the time. Yeah. Like, I don't really know if I've even went up, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> um, I don't know what way. Like, obviously, I've never won an Olympic medal before. Uh, I don't know what way to feel. Like, I just yeah. feel normal, very, very normal. Did you feel pressure as the competition went on, Kelly. Like, did you feel, because you were obviously getting feedback from what was happening in terms of the swell of support at home. Did the pressure build for you or had you, you your eyes on the prize all the time? See, I didn't feel pressure because I was literally, I wasn't getting told to the extremes what was going on yeah, at home. Yeah. I just was getting told like the support is amazing, you know, and, and when I was in the Worlds in 2018, when I won the medal, the support was amazing yeah. then. So that's what I thought it was like, you know, I thought yeah. it was that kind of level, you know, like uh, the community level, like and like around Dublin 1, Dublin 3, kind of, yeah. you know, but I didn't realise that it had like touched the whole nation really. Absolutely. Like, you know? It was Italian 90 level, that's what it was yeah. like to be quite yeah. honest. It was uh, mad, like, and I, I only seen it after, it was literally only after after the final when I actually seen clips of, of Portland Row. There you are, look. God, when you're looking at that though, Jeannie Mac, the pride of the nation, the pride of your home place was absolutely amazing. What did you feel like going through then as an Olympic champion? I hadn't slept since the fight up on pit lane. <laughs> and, and I literally, I was so tired. I, do you know, I'll be very honest, I was like, oh, I'm so tired. Like, I wish I could do this another day. That's, that's no word of a yeah, lie. Yeah. And then as soon as I turned onto the Luke Kelly bridge and seeing everyone just standing all along Ballybock, like I was like, Buzzing. me and Emmett just, we were just lifted like we were both. We just couldn't believe it. Because like, I remember you saying to directly it. after the flight, you were just you just wanted into your pajamas and sit on the couch and watch the telly for a while. You That's were what I've done for the last two months. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you enjoyed it? Oh, it's been like people say, "Oh, you must be flat out. You know, you must be real busy." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, you allow yourself to be busy, or you can either look after exactly, yourself and look yeah. after your own mental health, and that's what I'm kind of doing. Do you know, like, and you're um, back at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Are you? yeah, like, just come straight back down, like, and. Yeah. Get, get back into yeah, it. There's nowhere made, a way yeah, to yeah. mix with the people who have been there from the exactly, start, you know? Exactly. Yeah, and you made the decision, of course, to stay amateur as well, which was huge. Any regrets on that? No, no, I'm, I, I think um, for me personally, I have a whole lot to give back to, to the next generation coming up and to, to women in sport as well. Like, yeah. and I feel if I turn professional now, then, then all that's gone. Like, you know, you can't really give that back. So as well as I want, like, obviously I want to make a few bob out of it. I'm not yeah. an idiot, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I feel like that's what I'm there for now. But to that's be able hugely to important, isn't it, something. Kelly, that it's like, because we talk about that when it comes to women's sports, that it's high visibility. Yeah. And when we're seeing people like yourself and Katie in the same sport, yeah. it's such an inspiration to the next generation and even two generations coming up after you. This is it, like, you know, the amount of female sport now like yeah. all different f sports like that has really come through this year and because of covid everyone's really getting to see it you know what i mean That's and it's right, just yeah. absolutely amazing and it's not just me it's loads of other women as well yeah. loads yeah. of girls like young girls as well coming through and it's just it's just absolutely fantastic to be a part of it of you know to so be you, a part you, of you it you mentioned sport and and of, of course you mentioned sports or the, sort of the Olympic box for crying out loud, but you mentioned um, your mental health as well. And you were like, you had so much attention after winning the gold. And then you took the time out to mind your head. And we have the likes of um, uh, Simone Biles and we have the likes of Emma Raducanu, all at the top of their game as well, going, do you know what? I need to mind myself as yeah. well. That's very important, isn't it? To get the message out. Because everyone wants to pull out of you and everybody like, everybody's so nice and so lovely, but everybody has to tell you their story, you know, like, mm. and, you're nearly, you're nearly like part-time athlete, full-time counsellor now, you know, like yeah. people want it's to tell you. And yeah. it, is, it is like, it does get a bit draining. So you do need to be very, I don't know, specific what you do with your time, yeah, you know, yeah. like, and sometimes I just want to sit on the chair, drink tea, drink coffee, eat cakes, and just, just 
you know, I just can't, I just can't just imagine you telly, <laughs> like galore and not like not open the doors. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Mix with me, me family, me friends. Get out and walk the dogs and. You know, just enjoy, yeah. enjoy yeah. being normal, like, exactly, and yeah. you know, like you're. You and would... you're you're working at the minute on a campaign with the National Dairy Council. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I've actually been I've been an ambassador for the for a while. Yeah, yeah for a while for the last year or two. Uh, everything starts with milk campaign, so it's basically just trying to get people to drink more milk because yeah. uh, it's obviously milk is great for your for your for your growth, especially when you're in sport and stuff. You know, so. So many vitamins. So it's that thing that I tell my kids every day: drink milk because it's good for your bones. That's all. No, true. just tell them drink milk because you'll end up like Kelly. Like. Hey. <laughs> hey. I drink a lot of milk, and I'm not like you. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about that. But there's a training day today, isn't there? A national training day. Yeah, well, it's it's not to, like it's not today, but yeah. there is a competition uh, coming up, so they can enter a competition and they can win a training day. Then with myself, uh, just doing some boxing and stuff, you know. It's not so. what I'd be entering now. You, no. yeah. you and listen, speaking, me. <laughs> speaking of training, I was asking you before we. Come on, like I, I presume, are you going again? Are you looking at Paris? So why not? Do you know. Like... And when does that start for you? Because we, you know, we always hear about, and we all jump in. I say we, I mean the public, and we watch the competition, we watch the final. But there's so much work that goes in. So, in terms of prep, are you on it now? When do you kick it in? No, I ha today, tonight is the first day I'll put a pair. Well, not the first day I put someone for a little bit like but we the first proper night back with me club me me club coach now Bork out in St Mary's and yeah, yeah. I put the gloves on and I'll see how I am I, I I know I'm unfit you know but your body needs that you need to be able to come Recover. down and you know be able to say if I whack out two solid months like your body needs to be able to say right we know she's going to give her a break so we can push through this now and because she is eventually going to give us a break and that's what I've had I've had a break there that's the longest break I've ever had in fairness and is uh, it really? yeah I've been like it's hard when you go from full-time athlete to yeah couch sitting on your couch <laughs> eating so biscuits and cakes and chocolates are you, know? you dreading that or is that something that excites you like cause I'd imagine you love the drill you love the you know, getting up there and punishing yourself. I can't wait. I can't yeah, wait I to get back. Yeah. But I know I'm going to be in a place where I actually have never been in the in in a long time, and that's yeah. being very unfit. Like, and people think, oh Jesus, look at you, you're not very unfit. unfit. Like, you know, but you're not fighting fit. That's it. You know, yeah. like, and and it's everyone has different types of fitness levels. You know, like, yeah. and mine was right there. Now I'm back down here. Like, you know, so, so get, there. get there. That's it. Um, and you're looking ahead, obviously, to the next Olympics, and as Simon said, that's what, what you're, you're looking at now. But if we look at the recent reports, I mean, is it the Mac McLaren report, I think it was, that was into the, the 2016 Olympics and the questions, like, Michael Collins should have had a medal. There's questions mm. over uh, Katie Taylor's defeat. Um, and now there's talk that Boxy may not be part of the next Olympics. I mean, that is a huge concern, really. What, what do you make of that? To be very honest with you, right, I think they just like to make us sweat a little bit, you know. Mm. I, I can't see them ever taking boxing out of the Olympics. It's it's a massive part of Olympic of Olympic history, you know. So you're always gonna hear stuff and what have you like and I just kinda don't listen to any of that and I let them do whatever they have to do. But I know that boxing's gonna be in Paris twenty twenty four. Like I don't know you, it like you yeah. know like thoughts of you being our last ever Olympic boxing champion no. would be terrible. We've such a proud tradition here in Ireland. Yeah. It's like boxing is one of the like how many medals have we got from More than boxing? Any other discipline. We exactly. have half of the like there's thirty odd medals like and boxing owns half of them, you know, like so I think like we've suffered immensely throughout COVID, like yeah. uh, kids haven't been able to get into clubs and People don't realise like about boxing clubs. Coaches are voluntary coaches, and they're taking kids in off the street who could be going down the wrong pathway. Yeah. They do you know? so much for the community, and it's not really talked 100%. about enough. One hundred percent. And we need more funding to go into them boxing clubs. You know, like it's good putting into the high performance and everything, but we need that to go into the boxing clubs because these are the ones who, these are the grassroots clubs yeah. who are like without these grassroots clubs, you wouldn't have any Kelly yeah, Harrington's, any Katie Taylors, any Michael Collins. Yeah. You know, so that's where the money needs to go, and into the local youth clubs, not just the boxing clubs, because sometimes through the youth clubs, they're helping kids to develop and find themselves and find sport as well. So that's what I feel. Because anyway. that's the only, yeah. that, that is the genuinely one of the major ways that we create Olympic champions like yourself. Yeah. Grassroot if investment. those clubs, first of all, if they exist and if they're invested in, because they do reap rewards. And it's 100%. not just in terms of Olympic medals, but as you say, just getting kids off the streets, give them, give them a purpose. That's it. Not every kid is going to be an Olympic champion yeah. or an Irish champion, but if you can help a kid change their life, go down the right pathway, get a job, then that's job done, you know, like... But discipline and purpose, 
which everybody needs. Well said, champ. Point. Spoken yeah. like a true champion. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Great Thanks to see you, as lovely. always. See, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I was going to run away with your medal, but I better not. Because <laughs> <laughs> the closest I'll ever get to any sort of award, let me tell you. Thanks it's absolutely million, gorgeous. Kelly. Thank you, much. Great Thank you to see so you. much. Yeah. Now, still to come. Anyway, first medal. Next, we have another bit of, of decoration yeah. coming up. We're layering at the cash box. Stay with us for live until 10.